Hello, we are the Fair Political Practices Commission, or the FPPC, and we would like to welcome you to our video series for Form 700 filers. This module will discuss how to complete Schedule A-1 for investments in stocks, bonds, and other interests where your ownership interest is less than 10%. Please note that advice can be fact-specific and that you should not rely on this video alone for help. We are available by phone or email if you would like to contact us directly with your questions. Additionally, there are several other resources which we will discuss later in this video. Also note that during the video, we will refer to both the Form 700 and the Statement of Economic Interests. These are in fact the same document, but in general, the Form 700 is the form before it has been completed, while the statement is a completed form. To get to the Form 700 page on our website, start at our home page and click on the box that says, File a Form 700. The page that opens not only has a link to the form, but to other resources that we will be discussing during this module. Supplemental materials, such as the reference pamphlet, the Excel form, the gift and travel fact sheet, and amendment schedules can be very helpful to you when completing your statement. As the title of the schedule indicates, this is where you will report your interest in stocks and other types of investments or perhaps a partnership interest of less than 10% in a particular business entity. This includes these same types of interests owned by your spouse, registered domestic partner, or children. Keep in mind that you are only required to report investments in businesses that are reportable per your agency's Conflict of Interest Code. Also, the business must be located in your agency's jurisdiction, doing business in your jurisdiction, planning to do business in your jurisdiction, or has done business in your jurisdiction during the previous two years. Finally, the investment must have reached a value of at least $2,000 during the reporting period to be reportable on this schedule. Please note that you may find more information about Conflict of Interest Codes in our Need to Know video. Types of reportable investments for Schedule A-1 include stocks, corporate bonds, and any interest you may have in an entity where your ownership interest is less than 10%. This may include some assets in a management investment fund like a 401k or other such retirement account. If you don't know what types of assets your investment account holds, you should contact your investment company to request a list of assets that make up your portfolio. If the assets are reportable per your Conflict of Interest Code, you must disclose them on your Form 700. You should not, however, attach a brokerage statement to your Form 700. Not only will your filing officer request that you file an amendment, but the brokerage statement and all of the account information on that statement becomes public as it would be part of your completed Form 700, which is a public document. For a more complete list of types of reportable investments, see the Form 700 instructions and the Form 700 reference pamphlet. Fortunately, there are many types of investments that are not reportable on your Form 700, the most common of which are mutual funds. However, there are many other types of investments that you won't have to report either. These include money in checking and savings accounts, insurance policies, government bonds and CalPERS and CalSTRS retirement accounts. Nor do you have to report dividends or income from the sale of a stock so long as the source of the income is unknown. Finally, you do not have to report any investment whose value did not reach $2,000 during the reporting period, even if it is of the type noted in the previous slide. For a more complete list of types of non-reportable investments, see the Form 700 instructions and the Form 700 reference pamphlet. Once you know which assets to report, you can move on to completing Schedule A-1. In the first field, enter the name of the company in which you've invested. Please write out the entire name of the business entity. You may not use acronyms unless it is something common such as AT&T. Also, you should not write the name of the investment company that manages the investment. You must report the individually held reportable stock. The general description of the business need not be long, a few words will suffice. Next. Enter the highest fair market value the stock reached during the reporting period. If you are filing an assuming office statement, indicate the fair market value of the stock on the day you took office. Everyone completing Schedule A-1 must indicate the nature of the investment. Is it stocks, partnerships, warrants, bonds, or stock options? If it is a different type of reportable investment, please check the box marked Other and write in the type of investment. If you are reporting a partnership of less than 10%, you must also indicate how much income you received from the partnership during the reporting period. If you received $500 or more from the partnership, you must include that income on Schedule C in addition to noting it here. The last section asking for acquired and disposed dates does not apply to all filers. You need only complete it if you sold the entire investment or if you bought it anew during the reporting period. If this applies to you, you must provide the date or dates that you bought and or sold the investment. Please note that you do not report dates if you sold some shares of an investment or bought more shares of an investment that you already held. For example, if you have 500 shares of stock in Pfizer and sold 100 shares in March of last year and then bought 200 more shares in August, 
you would not report any acquired or disposed dates. You would only report those dates if you sold all of the 500 shares or bought the entire 500 shares during the reporting period. These dates are important because they remind you when you may have to recuse yourself from a decision. For instance, if a contract goes out for bid and in the last 12 months you've purchased shares of stock from one of the bidding contractors, you may not be able to participate in decisions about the contract. If you are not sure if you can participate in a decision because of your investments, send your questions to us at advice at fppc.ca.gov. The hard copy of the Form 700 has places to report six different investments. If you have more than six investments to report, that's good news for you. In that case, you can either copy the schedule as many times as needed, or you can report the investments on the Excel version of Schedule A1. The advantage of using the spreadsheet is that you can save it for the next year's filings. It will be easier to make changes to an existing document rather than entering the data again on next year's form. You can find the Excel version on FPPC's website. If you are filing electronically, this system will allow you to add as many investments as you must report. They will all be saved for your next filing, and you will be able to add, delete, or edit investments as needed at that time. If after submitting your completed statement, you discover that you have made an error or left off a reportable interest, you should amend your statement as soon as possible. You do not need to complete the entire form again, only the schedule or schedules where there are errors. Amendment schedules are located on the Form 700 page. Please note that the amendment will be attached to your original statement and that your original statement will not be discarded. If you have further questions on completing your Form 700, we are available to help. For questions on what to disclose or how to disclose it, please call us during advice hours or send us an email. If you are having technical problems with your agency's e-filing system, please contact the filing officer at your agency to see who provides support for your system. If you are having technical issues with the FPPC system, please send an email to the address noted on this slide. This concludes the training module for Schedule A1 of the Form 700. We hope that you will watch our other videos for Form 700 filers to learn about other schedules. Please note that you may want to complete the cover page last so you'll know which schedules to attach to your completed statement, if any. Thank you for your interest in FPPC training.